clearly, the UK uh, taking very much a leading role uh, and encouraging other countries to do as they're doing. Um, do you support uh, the increase in British military support for Ukraine, and in particular, this area of whether we and other Western allies should supply aircraft to Ukraine? I support the weapons, uh, and I can't emphasize too much the importance of following through on words and actually making things happen, uh, and that must come from all NATO nations, and, and you've touched on perhaps nations that have not been so uh, energetic in providing those weapons. I think it's absolutely vital that we provide Ukraine with as many weapons as we can to defend itself. On the issue of aircraft, uh, that is more complicated. Yeah. I cannot see any difficulty. Uh, it's, it's a matter of uh, facing up to uh, certain uncomfortable elements of it, but providing aircraft the, of Russian design from Poland, for example, for Ukraine uh, makes a lot of sense to me, and uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to forward aircraft to take the place of those for the defense of Poland. Uh, but it, uh, it's completely unrealistic, in, in my view, to provide Ukraine with, for example, aircraft like the Typhoon or the F-35 uh, or even F-16s, because the training time needed to bring them up to the standard yes. that they would need uh, would be such that uh, it, it simply wouldn't work. So, so I think it's got to be a variation on the themes that have already been um, put forward. I understand that, but Lavrov, uh, the foreign minister, Russian foreign minister, yes, he was hinting uh, that if there is any, as he sees it, escalation, uh, as a, you know, I emphasise as he sees it, escalation from NATO members, then, you know, bases in NATO countries themselves could become targets. Are we risking escalation, or do we have to do this because it's the right thing to do? Well, that's exactly it. It is the right thing to do. And, and he will continue to bluster and threaten and all the rest of it. We've seen it. This has been coming for, I would think, at least 10 or 12 years. I had lunch yesterday with somebody called Chris Donnelly, who is a real expert in, in the, the Russian field. Uh, and he's been advising people, for, to my knowledge, my personal knowledge, for 30-something years. And 10 years plus ago, he said to us, he said to the world, we are at war, but we don't know it. And the fact is that we've been at war with Russia for that period of time under Putin, and we haven't faced up to it. And you've touched on some of the things that uh, were so obvious if you were prepared to acknowledge them. Uh, and I can list them as you can, the things that have happened, which would tell you that we've got a war, a different sort of war to, to a degree. We have now got a serious war, uh, and we have not been properly prepared for it. Uh, I hope this is a wake-up call that really will resonate around capitals. And I hope very much that we will not be upset by the threats that we're going to get from Putin and Lavrov and the rest of them, and stand up together, united, by providing Ukraine with the weapons that they need and standing firm against the Russian threat. A final thought, if I may, Sir Michael. Through all those years of the Cold War, uh, well, there we were, up against the Soviet Union. Uh, yes, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, but I don't remember, you know, at any point in the last 60 years, um, any big state in the world talking about the possibility of nuclear weapons. Is this just bluff by Russia, or does it worry you that if Putin gets boxed into a corner, that if he's not of sound mind, that, that we could reach that level? Well, we, we shouldn't forget Cuba, but I think, in a sense, that was a, a bit of an aberration. You're right. The reason that we, in my view, uh, didn't have that uh, drama, if you like, was because we had uh, a thing called flexible response, a strategy, which provided a whole raft of capabilities uh, to deal with different incursions, different situations, which were very evident to the then Soviet Union, who knew that we had capability, they knew that we were united, we were prepared to use it. And uh, that is what has been lacking for so long and what has encouraged Putin uh, in what he's up to now. I think we have to take these on the chin uh, and, and just push back.
Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.